Hello, this is a Richard Lip Grand Piano, 175 centimetres long, made in 1904. Just come into stock, just want to see what sort of work we need to do to perfect it and also to have a look at the quality of the piano generally. I'm very grateful to get this into stock because it's been one of my favourite models of Richard Lip and Richard Lip, if you've been following my videos, it's always been a favourite of mine. I've had two of this model in my house over about a 20 year period and uh, just sold one recently so this will be a candidate to go in my house it's I've got a Steinway at the moment but I'm particularly fond of Richard Lip as the original retailer I presume there it's unusual for a retailer to put his name there if we re-polish the piano you might take that off if you would like us to do that well the piano doesn't desperately need repolishing, uh, except that the top has faded um, in fact the whole case is good it's a rosewood case it's been finished in a kind of satin finish but the colour matches well throughout and it's all original case. I always like the styling of the music stand. This is typical lip. You can always tell that's a lip when you see that. Um, and the, mu the music stand scrolling itself is very pretty. And uh, the logo, this is the older logo for Richard Lip. I'm not quite sure when they moved to doing the more plainer logo, but this is 1904, which was the same year as the one that I had. It's 88 keys, by the way. Um, and uh, the keys are very good ivory they're very dirty we're going to have to buff them and and clean them but they're they're perfect ivories just want to look at the pedals and this uh this is the, if i had this in my house it'd be the first one with original legs this is original steinway style what they call elephant legs it's not perhaps a very uh flattering name for them but it's obviously the style of the leg and uh, mine had a more turned than fluted legs but these are this is all original and um it's nice to get the piano all original i always feel uh, we'll try and do that always. Uh, to have a look at the rest of the case is in good condition round the sides too. Uh, this long side here is also pretty perfect and uh, no veneer problems at all. Just the polish on the top as we'll see in a second. So if you look at the, the lid folded back um, it looks integral the whole colour but if you lift the lid here as we've seen on other videos there you have the fade line where the lid's always been held back and actually interesting enough there's a fade line at the top end of there as well so i've got photos of this on our website too um, if you want to refer back to them just to have a look at the case but uh, i'm enthusiastic about the piano now the acoustic side of it um, is has been restored very very well the tuning pins are extremely tight these are this is restrung looking at the color of the bass strings i would say early 70s that was restrung and um, I think we can confirm that with some dates inside the piano actually. Uh, just as my uh, con conjecture, there's that you can't see it very clearly. That says so Bristol Pianos there. So somebody restrung it, I think, when it was there. This is my guess because um, I think the owner bought it from there and has had it ever since. So, say in the 70s, it was restrung and uh, the soundboard is perfect as well. So, and the frame is very well finished off so internally the whole acoustic side of it is really really excellent one reason i'm particularly fond of lips is that the the, the tone and we've mentioned this before when i'm checking a piano I, I, I always check around the middle here play it loud slightly out of tune but it's that pitch actually but it, the sound carries across the soundboard um in other words when you play the note here um, from the bridge the sound carries across and on some makes um, and even good makes Beckstein's a, a case in point sometimes you get a thinner sound round here and Steinway's too Blutner seems to be very very consistent and you never seem to get that problem if you're a tuner or technician you might like to comment but, and the break point too is always excellent on, on Richard Lips well, that's on the larger ones, not so much on the very small one. And uh, that's as good a bass sound. I think these strings are e excellent. Um, perhaps they're slightly short. We've mentioned this before. We want it to come closer to the agraph, but they, the tone of them is good. Right down to the bottom A. Now having said that, the hammers are letting it down as we'll see in a minute. They're a bit thin and really the sound shouldn't be thin. The underlying tone is perfect really. 
just the hammers that are making it sound thin. Now I mentioned the 70s uh, and I'm just wondering if this relates to that some tune. I do like it when tuners put uh, the date that they tune the piano uh, because it just helps us with a bit of detective work when, uh, which I love doing and uh, I'm not sure what those other things are at the back there but that's so clear isn't it that's been tuned every year and uh, they're very very stable pianos lips so I just assume that that uh, it was restored before 1977 and uh, it looks like it from the colour of the strings but can't be certain obviously it's just nice to try and do the detective work and uh, just having a look at well by the way these marks here these these are regulation marks that someone's put on before but as we're going to see now uh, there's the action side of the piano mechanical side definitely needs work now these hammers I was hoping when I first saw them that we might just be able to reface them um, but listening to the tone and also the weighting of the keys as we'll see in a minute is so bad and also the regulation is way out these are actually about uh, one centimeter lower than they should be um, there's the hammer blow of about 60 millimeters so even more than one centimeter 50 uh, 47 is the normal or 40 set yes would be normal for this and the hammers are so lightweight um, you often get this on lips I'm not quite sure why but again if you would like to comment if you're a technician that would be really good to hear but they have done lots of work you see he's replaced the, um, the check for uh, the check here has been replaced not the check itself the, the felt the um, uh, the leather there uh, buckskin sorry I couldn't think of what it was um, I think those have been possibly replaced at the same time but we would replace hammers, shanks and rollers because not only, not only are they um, small, they're very stiff, they're varying, but some of them are much stiffer than others and, and some of them are sticking. You see that one there, um, it's just not, not coming back down. The hammer is very, very light too. And the, the, the end hammer here was actually worn through at the top. So it has been played quite a bit. Uh, you'd normally say, well, maybe we can reface this, but they're small hammers and uh, I think they need to be heavier. Uh, the touch as we'll see in a minute is generally too light and very very varied um, so that's that's an important now I have checked under the keys here um, to see if we could add leads because that's another possibility to make the action heavier and there's plenty of space to put leads in there um, key weights so that could happen if you wanted a heavy a normal action because this is light as we'll see so that's a worksheet summary as we're doing these days um, just to showing the details of the piano obviously different measurements that we've made legroom not huge legroom by the way uh, the pedals are okay at the moment if you wanted to increase legroom by putting caster cups under you'd have to lower the pedals that is possible if we fully repolish the piano um, though it's quite a lot of work but we can get the pedals lower down they're fine at the moment if you don't have a problem with the legroom which is a little bit less than say Yamaha U1 or even the Yamaha Grand slightly less that which will be 61 61 and a half I think um, so it's uh, that's a factor that needs factoring in really um, and look at the key weights here see uh, that, that's the down weight we've got measured there and middle C is 40 and the C above it is 30 which is amazingly low 30, 32 is the one above it should be about 50 uh, 48 50 if we look at this is the C above middle C and it's going down that's a 32 gram weight so I've called that 30 and this one here 32 uh, which is as I say extraordinarily it. down the bottom end we have this um, F sharp here 60 so that's too heavy and then so it's very 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 difficult to play really so that's a Richard Lip grand piano made in 1904 just come into stock um, really grateful to get this piano and as I mentioned earlier on it's one that I'm trying to source it's always been one of my favorite models of grand pianos uh, be interested to know what you think if you're a technician but certainly my experience of lips I've enjoyed them over the years so much there's just such a clarity of tone about them at the moment the hammers are letting them down letting it down but um, the underlying tone is good and the action is letting it down as well. So it's got lots of action work to do, but acoustically, not a huge amount to do really. Around there, too weak, not bringing out the tone of the hammers really. You can see the notes sticking, that's the ham tight hammers and 
very light hammer, so. Now the previous piano I had to the one I've got now in my house was a Richard Lipp, um, extraordinary piano. Uh, it was restyled case though, that was the one thing which uh, I wasn't incredibly happy, but it was well restyled. This one is all original case, you can see the original music stand um, and uh, the original pedals and, uh, and elephant legs, uh, like the Steinway legs of this period. Although it's actually the Steinway legs were slightly earlier of this, this style. It's a very even tone wherever you play it. no reason at all why you shouldn't study on a piano like this because a lot of people I've been mentioning recently that will buy new pianos because they think the action is going to be perfect well if we restore a piano we'll get it as near to a new piano as we possibly can and often with the older pianos like this is to me a better action some people say that the Richard Lip style action which I didn't show you on this one is slightly different from other actions but it is the best action ever made um, well it's certainly as good as any other action If you're interested in the piano, please let me know we'd like it polished or not, because that's one thing we could do, just to integrate the top. Though the piano doesn't need polishing apart from that, and you, you can't see that if the lid is folded back. So I hope that's been helpful. Thank you very much for listening. This piano is available now. Uh, well, you couldn't really try it now. We're going to change, we're going to take the action out, and we're going to change the hammers, shanks, and rollers, and then we're going to uh, uh, regulate the whole piano. There's a lot of work, but, uh, definitely worth doing. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>